Chris, welcome home. We should put the lights on, I suppose. That would be a good idea. Ta-da! Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're back. We did do it somewhat on uh, last Friday during our subathon, which has now come to an end. Ten days. We were live here on Twitch and on YouTube. And now, my friends, <sighs> now... We are nearly all the way moved in. It was an absolutely extraordinary event with murals created, all sorts of wonderful stuff. You'll see that on all the highlights uh, of what people did. And 22,000 subs were raised on Twitch to help me, Chris, and the team put this place back into some sort of working order. And we're almost getting there. You can see the, the, the Emperor of Man has joined us now, along with a whole feast of other things. And more and more to come, as well as uh, rebuilding all our lights and sets and things like that to make good quality YouTube videos and comments and moments and tournaments and all that kind of stuff that we were doing before our studio got destroyed. So all back on the menu, and it will take us a little while to get it all done. Probably over the next couple of months, we'll keep updating you with everything that is happening uh, and when it's going to be happening. But it was an absolutely enormous, uh, enormous win with the civil war that took place ending, unfortunately, in a chaos victory. I say unfortunately because that is how I feel about it. It was unfortunate, but that's last week. And not why here right now. Of course, this will be our Christmas episode of Drama Time. Merry Christmas to you all. We will be having a wonderful party in FF14 for New Year's Eve. So if you've never been to a party, we are holding the time warp. It will be around 6, 7 p.m. UK time. And we will bring be bringing in the New Year's celebrations across big chunks of the world leading up to like 1 a.m., something like that. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. We'll have all the details in our Discord, but if you've never been to one, or you've never played FF14, you can use your free trial to come along. Uh, it's absolutely more than welcome to do that. You don't need to buy anything, and if you're going to be on your own on New Year's Eve, I would suggest you join us, because it's going to be a hell of a night. Get a couple of drinks in, or whatever is your poison, and have a good old time. That's what I recommend. It's going to be good. So even though it is the 22nd of December right now, certainly things are not quieting down over here. Drama time is upon us. I have four stories in front of me today. Four stories. One of them is a follow-up, <laughs> uh, which are always kind of interesting, especially if we said something that would annoy uh, the authors of our tales. But considering it was the story we read with Jordan as our special guest, who was here last week, she joined. Uh, she joined us for my surprise birthday party that took place here in the studio, which was incredible lovely to see so many people including my mother who i didn't even know was in the country uh which was always surprising to see her but still wonderful and i'll see her on christmas day along with of course paku and all sorts of others that were in here not raven though because he is garbage human garbage <clears throat> and that's his fault let's get started and let's have a fun friday afternoon good day preacher thank you for reading my tale i had a great laugh with how you and jordan voiced it all of us in our Discord had a good laugh together, though. Someone clipped your message for that guild who had not left yet and posted it in that guild's Discord. In every channel they could post in, followed by leaving the guild and their Discord. You see... It was probably the correct decision, if I'm being honest with you. It was probably the correct decision. Like, uh, <laughs> I can't remember the exact details, but if we judged you unworthy... Oh, I do remember. Jordan was being really nice and Jordan about it, wasn't she? Like, there's still a chance. There's all this. No, just terrible. Just the worst. I also just wanted to follow up and clarify some things that you guys were asking about. First of all, the semi-hardcore for that guild was that they were they clear bosses on heroic without needing everyone to pass plus 90. That was their definition of casual. You need a 90 plus pass to... Okay. They tried to get GDKP runnings, uh, r goes, uh, runs going, but only ever really ended up setting them up so the IRL officer team could send the newly dinged 80s they just boosted using third-party sites into them, using the guild's bank to pay for the gear and get carried. I found out that it was more than just the guild master using the guild bank before I left, thanks to one of the officers who had had the worst of all mistell moments. Unlucky. An in-game guild chat asking how much they could take out of the bank for the GDKP run. Clown. Clown. They authorized the officers to steal from the guild bank to pay for the runs. And he asked in guild chat how much he can take. 
What a moron. <laughs> I thank you for the advice, but it was not necessarily needed anymore as the majority of the raiders from both groups one and two already left and it was like reading about mass walkouts of big corporations. Just a minor note for what we, uh, for what we were wiping to in Ulduar, we would wipe to Shadow Crash from Vezax, the Star Killer on Algalon, not timing it properly and overlapping. We wiped once on Firefighter Phase 3 and never went back. <laughs> We would ne we never would go and do normal Freya as her trash takes too long to do. <laughs> okay. Secondly, we genuinely did make the second Discord for Cataclysm Classic as the guild had no plans to play Cataclysm. But as I said, it just became the new area to post our frustrations and other discussions we couldn't have with the IRL officer team. The majority of the then current raiders, you remember they made the separate Discord, Classic, Thirdly, they caught, uh, they caught on to me changing officer notes as someone called out that my ranking had gone up even though I had just won two items. So they demoted me back to Raider and tried to have what I can only describe as an HR meeting with me in Discord after Raid. I paid no attention and just responded with the bare minimums of, yeah, that sounds about right, okay. But what I actually begun was I had been logging into my alts that were officer rank and started removing the notes that it was my alt and made my way to the bank. The guild bank was set up so officers could take one item each from the vault page. I ended up taking one epic BOE piece from the BOE page, ranging from craftables to ICC, a stack of fish feasts from the other tab. So you became a thief. You fell to despair, my friend. A stack of flasks and one stack of enchanting materials and any other items that were valuable while also typing out what they were talking to me about in the other Discord. When they finished my HR meeting, asking that I apologize to everyone in the officer team for my behavior, and that I would only be able to raid with Group 2 now because of the imposed limitations on my playtime, I immediately left the guild, and some people slowly started following after, before the majority crumbled over the next couple of weeks. Fourthly, the IRL officer team wanted to keep Group 2 as the alt run, whereas the majority wanted Group 2 to just be their own group, like Method Black and Method Orange as an example. I should also mention that Group 2's raid leader was using his alt and not his main for Group 2, because he's, he uses his main in another guild's GDKP run, and figured it would be better if he geared up more alts should we ever want to do progress. Finally, the person who was streaming and had the VOD saved the VOD externally and uploaded it to his YouTube channel, put the clip of the raid leader saying they were quitting after they got Shadow Mourn in the guild's Discord before they left, and followed up by also PMing the clip to some people who whispered him why he had left. I think that's everything, but nonetheless, thank you, Mike, for reading not only this, but the original story. I'm currently finishing another tale for you, and I can't wait for you to read it. Much love from Team Australia. Well, now you know, Oceanic! <clears throat> dangerous games to be played in Oceanic. Dangerous games. God, these corrupted guilds, man, are the absolute worst. Uh, okay. I noticed something weird about this. Let's move on to our first fresh story of the week. A picture is worth. I mean, have we got room? Yeah. There we go. There we go. Be perfect. Perfect. Uh, okay, we need a few names for this one. Uh, do we need any guild names from the live audience? We do not. Perfect. Ender Gamma. Vulgate. Angel Wing. Grab. And Nashes. Will be our stars for today. All right. There's a note here from Bex. So if you're not sure, Bex uh, reads through the stories before they make it make their ways to me to make sure, one, that they're cool enough to put on the show and two, to augment them so the names are all mixed in properly. And we don't accidentally reveal. We like to keep an anonymity on uh, Drama Time despite the fact that some of you watch them with your guild. And that's your choice, not mine. Hey, Mike and chat. I have a fun mini game for you for this story. Count the amounts of different names for a penis take place in what Mike is about to read. So the story is called A Picture is Worth a Thousand and there's going to be multiple names for penis in the story. I wonder what happened. <laughs> I wonder what happened here. <laughs> what a suspicion I have as to where this tale may take us, my friends. <clears throat> 
Okay, let's go. Hello, preacher, and your chat full of effervescent, juicy, thick, thick thighed goth mommy snacks. That's not a penis euphemism, as far as I can tell. I'm writing to you again from the land where we roll back human rights and make sure everybody has a gun. That's right, I'm from USA. <laughs> USA, USA. I have written to you before, a long time ago, about my friend Endergammer and his adventure of long distance love setting relationship ultimatums based on World of Warcraft weekly resets. Oh, I remember this. I do remember this. And husbands having sex with their mother-in-laws. I do remember this. This was bad. This was really, really bad. Yeah, and they ended up staying together. Yeah, I remember this. When I laughed less, when I last left you, where Endergammer and his brother's ex fiance who is pregnant with Endergammer's nephew, started a relationship and moved in together. It was around this time that I met some of Endergammer's other World of Warcraft. Let's just be clear on this, because this is the setting. This is the foundation of the tale we're going into, my friends. This is the foundation. Endergammer has a brother. His brother has a fiance who is pregnant, right? With his brother's nephew. But Endergammer's Endergammer started dating her and moved in with her. That's the foundation. That's the foundation. <clears throat> it was around this time that I met some of Endergammer's other World of Warcraft friends. A husband and a wife named Rab and Nashes. Now Rab is a wonderful, unfiltered human. We will tell it like it is in plain language and not give two shits about how he does it. Even if he can come off as abrasive of times. It is most always with love. His wife, Nashes, is usually the more grounded and tactful of the two of them. But also doesn't really put up with no shit from anybody. They both have a great sense of humor and are as funny and raunchy as they come. They are wonderful people to know. After Endergammer and Vulgate got together, it was very common for Endergammer, Vulgate, Rab, Nashes, Angel Wing, who was another friend from the previous tale, and myself to chill in Discord and crack jokes and hang out while we were all playing some WoW together. Endergammer is his usual self, and we would get the daily rundown of what was going on in his traumatic life. To be honest, we always looked forward... <laughs> to hearing Endergammer's tales and we're always down to give him a bit of advice if he asked but every single day was like a brand new episode of a TV show but after Vulgate moved in with Endergammer they were in the honeymoon phase of their relationship they were together they were sleeping together all the time now this would not be a problem at all normally but Endergammer is Endergammer and his life is his life and he would share all the details with us constantly. Vulgate was also in the honeymoon phase and felt the need to share everything as well. She would tell Endergammer how amazing he was in bed, how large his meat whistle is, especially compared to his brother's. I mean, <laughs> stop laughing, you. <laughs> Endergammer then. Pass this information on to us. Again, this wouldn't be a problem in small doses, but Endergammer doesn't do anything in small doses. It would start literally with him joining the chat, saying hello and telling us about his massive danger noodle and all the things he did to Vulgate with it. <sighs> At first, it was kind of funny, but then after a few days, it was like, huh. <laughs> Okay. And just kind of rolling on with it. Making good-hearted jokes about them being, you know, together and being entertained. After two weeks, though, it started to get old. Really old. In that second week, he would join chat, steer the conversation towards his pronounced massive tickle stick. We would try to change the topic or kind of ignore it and be a little annoyed that this was still going on. By the third week, Rab had well enough of hearing about Endergammer's soggy hot dog. <clears throat> Rab started to tell Endergammer that he did not believe he had a big pants mushroom. 
that he actually had a tiny, tiny schlong and that he would not believe otherwise until Ender Gamma sent him a picture of his throbby jobby with a banana for scale. As clearly Vulgate was only telling him these things to make him feel better about himself. Rab was brutal with these insults. It would start on Ender Gamma the second he tried to talk about his joystick. Call him baby, baby dick, tiny phallus, dickle rick and more besides. And he didn't say these things in a joking way. He was over it. And kept trying to tell him that it's just your new girlfriend trying to make you feel good. This went on for like another week. And Ender Gamma did not want to send a discount stick pic also did not want to stop talking about what his girlfriend was telling him about his purple-headed yogurt slinger. At some point, money got brought up. Over the next week, I listened to them haggle about how much a picture of Ender Gamma's disco stick would cost. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> The amount of trolling that was now going on was reaching fever pitch. These discussions started to happen every single day, and Ender Gamma really did not want to sell a picture of his microscopic maggot to Rab. At this point, we all kind of were invested. It wasn't really even about seeing a penis anymore. It was more about just getting over the finish line. I cannot overstate how hard we all tried to get Ender Gamma to sell Rab a picture of his wiener. It was over a month, a month of Endergamma coming into chat, starting to talk about his godlike Frank and Beans, Rab getting mad and telling Endergamma to prove it, and then all of us trying to get him to sell the pick of his pocket monster. It was every day for weeks and weeks. I love Endergamma. He's hilarious. His life is insane. And I'm happy that he was with somebody he was enjoying with. But fucking hell, this dude just was not shut the fuck up. Eventually, over the course of these discussions, my friends, the price reached a hundred dollary dues. Official USA Chris Bills. I couldn't sit idly by. This was now a pretty... Oh, you didn't do it. This was a pretty real amount of money for one dick pic. And myself, as well as Endergamma, are fucking poor. Did you sell a picture of your dick on behalf of another person? Please tell me you didn't sell a picture of your dick on behalf of another person. You, a, a stunt cock? You stunt cocked it? Is that where we're going? You stunt cocked it? <sighs> At this point, my friends, I had been a spectator, just enjoying the back and forth and the bants. But with this kind of money on the line... I felt it was a pretty fucking good deal for one throbbing member pick, and he should do it. He was hesitant at first, but I kept trying to tell him, dude, $100 for a picture of a dick? That's nothing. And there are picture of dicks everywhere. He thought about it for a while. And eventually he agreed. And by the end of all the bants, the price had reached... A hundred and thirty dollars. <sighs> if you're not somebody who's going to suffer from this, like, I, <laughs> I don't think I could do this because it'll just follow me around forever and ever and ever, given what I do. But in a private group of friends, for a hundred and thirty dollars, would you do it? Would you do it? In a private group of friends, you're not connected to any sort of broadcast network. You're not connected to any sort of real social media or anything like that. For a picture of a dick, I mean, a dick's a dick, right? Bro, I'd show mine for $5. <laughs> it's a dick. A dick's a dick. Who cares, man? A dick's a dick. At least with your own picture, you can get it all worked up and frenzy-like. It'd be all good. The price was finally set at $130. There's a lot of people who've seen my dick in the college days. It's been out there. It's done its thing. I had to wear a morph suit with Chris recently. It was pretty see-through. <laughs> been a lot of, lot of moments. A lot of moments. Now, the price has been set. $130. But, of course, there were conditions. Endergamma 
had to have his face in the photo and an easily identifiable object next to his erect man meat for reference. On Endergamma's end, he said that nobody... Oh my god. Okay, the most cringe fucking shit ever. On Endergamma's end, he said that nobody but Rob, his wife, Nashes, were allowed to see the picture. Dude, if you're gonna do it, be under the understanding everybody's going to see the picture. Every Once you send that shit into the digital universe, everybody's got it. It's to assume that everybody has it. There is no fucking way. Also, if, the, if they agreed that his claims were in fact true, he wanted them to call him Biggest Dickus going forward. Vulgate, and the other part of the agreement was Vulgate, Endergamma's girlfriend, also demanded that he take her out for dinner at a lovely Chinese restaurant with the money for her cut prompting this situation. I think that's bullshit. I think that is a step too far, honestly. I may have taken you out for that dinner anyway, but that's my fucking money because that's my dick out there. Right? That's bullshit. Yeah, it's it's his dick money. Exactly. It's his dick money. That's the deal that has been struck, though. The groundwork has been laid, and the pick was set to be taken. The next day, when I logged in, the deal had gone through. Rob had sent the money, and Ender Gamma had sent the pick. It was not just some pick, though. Ender Gamma went all... Oh, you had to. You had to. You had to go all out. If you're going to do it, you want it to be classy. He had mood lighting. He had a backdrop. The whole nine yards. From what I was told, Ender Gamma stood on the edge of his couch. Had Vulgate arouse him until he's sure that he was at his maximum potential. And then used... Okay. Pop quiz for the live chat here. There's wonderful audience joining me. I'm sorry you uh, audio listeners can't join in on this. What is the worst thing you could use for a, side com- a size comparison that is available in every single person's house? It's not a banana. What is the absolute worst thing? A pen? No. Cucumber? No. Tape measure? No. Ruler? No. Oh, way worse. A ruler makes sense. A ruler has some sort of measurement on it. Okay, we have the answer. It's in the chat. He had decided to use his toothbrush. For reference. That's fucking messed up, man. That's really dark. That's 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 messed up, man. A toothbrush... Of all the things to find, a phone would be fine. A remote, con- uh, remote control is not good. They're not standardized. I don't know. A hammer. There you go. A hammer works. That's okay. Hammer's good. <sighs> he had decided to use his own toothbrush next to his shiny worm for reference. And had Vulgate... Go on her knees below his varnished eel with him looking down and his face in the shot. That's just a pawn shot at that point, right? That's kind of taking the fun out of it. (laughs) The chimichanga was shiny where Vulgate had clearly been at work on it and I swear you could see some steam coming off it. His hot tamale in the picture was about a third of the length of the toothbrush. How big's that toothbrush? See, I don't believe that. I don't... I don't believe that. I don't believe that. No, I don't believe that. I think that's just mean. I think that's just being really mean. 
I, I, I don't believe it, right? That's just a dick. Have you ever seen somebody send a dick pic where it was like, oh, yeah, that... <laughs> It was, it's always small. But if someone recounts the story, it's always small. Unless it's some sort of fucking gargantuan thing, in which case it's undeniable. It's always retold as small. It was about the third of the length of a toothbrush. Rob was more than satisfied with his picture and promptly gave Endergammer the nickname Average Endergammer. Ultimately, though, this worked like a charm. Anytime Endergamma tried to talk about his ginormous stirring rod, Rod would call him Average Endergamma and remind him that he has a picture of his rooster and knows exactly how big it is. Endergamma continues to tell us about his sexual exploits pretty regularly. Hey, still getting some. <laughs> Our boy's happy, he doesn't give a fuck. But with less of an emphasis on his own trouser snake. We're all fine with this as we're able to have normal degenerate conversations most of the time again. Now... We all started to talk about possibly meeting in Vegas. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. For a hang at some point when we can all afford it. If and when we do, Rob assures us he will get the picture framed to hang in the hotel room we stay in. Not going anywhere. My friend, that brings us to the end of the tale of Endergammer and his very short and very lucrative venture into sex work. I'm proud of my boy. Proud of little Jelly. I can't seem to give away pictures of my stink worm for free. And here's Endergammer with a straight <laughs> married man practically throwing money at him for one pick. If I could get that deal, I would be all over it. Shit, I'd do it for $2 and a McDouble. There are more tales of Ender Gammer and his amazing adventures, and after seeing the first drama time I sent in, he is coming around and is telling me he is okay with me writing more. To be clear, Ender Gammer, you were really okay with the story of your small penis? This is fine. <laughs> sure, send it in. <laughs> Let <him know. laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Share it with the world. Average, not small. A third of a toothbrush? Is the average. Makes me feel good about myself. That'll be all right. I can reach halfway up a toothbrush. I reckon. I reckon side by side. I can go. I can go 50% a toothbrush. I think I can make it. I'd have to really focus. But I think I can get there. Same dude. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I think you can 50 gig a chad 50% toothbrush. I can make it. <laughs> Uh, I do not think you would want to see the picture. No, I don't want to see a picture of your friend's penis. No, I don't. It's fine. And Endergammer is not okay with me sending it. I really wish you hadn't asked as if it was like a possibility. Okay? I, let's, just, let's just draw the line there. There is no reason to send any genital pictures to Drama Time. Bex doesn't need that. I don't need that. My email inbox doesn't need that. It's fine. It's totally fine. <clears throat> so you'll have to rely on my description and use your vivid imagination to enjoy Endergammer's magical wand. Thank you so much, Jolly Do. You're my favorite YouTube content creator. Uh, I'm on the my second listen through the entire Drama Time series. It's making me laugh just as much the first time, as well as making my work days go faster. Thank you very, very much. And P.S. If nobody that watches your content has told you, you have the most beautiful blue eyes. Oh, thank you. Whenever my girlfriend and myself watch you and you loom directly into the camera, we both get twin nosebleeds and can't help but scream. <laughs> Jesus Christ. P.S. Yes, I shared this story with our friend Angel Wing to read over before sending it to you, and she accidentally uploaded it onto her works OneDrive and couldn't figure out how to delete it. Delete it. She had a meltdown over Discord while another friend helped her figure out how to delete the story of our friend's penis. <laughs> <laughs> so technically, Endergammer's turkey baster almost got somebody fired. That is a powerful tallywhacker. And PPS, I have attached the link to the sex video of the meth-addled husband banging his wife in a hotel room from the last story that you requested. It is not sexy. Enjoy. Note from Bex, I have received a link. I have not clicked on it. I am not sending random porn links to my boss. Thank you for understanding. Hmm... Hmm. It's not random. We, like, know where it came from. <laughs> it's not random. You know what I mean? It's not random. It's not like a... <laughs> it's, in my opinion, it's not super, super random. I think it's pretty good. <clears throat> uh, uh, 
Okay. Okay, let's move let's move on. I no, I don't want to listen to the pawn actually. I've no doubt said that in jest. Okay. I've no doubt it got sent in jest. For sure, right? I don't actually want to listen to it. Emma, I would never want that. Just saying. <clears throat> Okay, this is a long title. The question that killed. All right, I'm going to so I'm going to shorten it. Killed the FC. All right, the full you title of this one is the question that destroyed the oldest free company guild. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I did not actually. I will tell you, I did not actually read all of the stories, uh, all of the names for the penis. There was a little too many. Okay. Breach. Bex and present company. I thank you. From the bottom of my heart, I truly do. After having found you about a year ago, I've now learned from your great and terrible audience that I am not the stupidest person to have ever played an MMO. I'm not alone this low down on the intellectual food chain, but there are there's not many below me. Ah, beautiful, sexy chat. Your wisdom knows no bounds. I see those raised gavels and all they'll be popping off, and I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not come before the court to ask for a verdict. I am guilty. And it gets worse than that. I am here to share my guilt and to shed the weight of this crime from my shoulders because I destroyed the FC of the kindest man I ever met in FF14. Yes, my friends, I am the one guy. I am the poisoned apple. And I am here to share my tale. He's the one. Okay, to better understand the how of it, I must, of course, begin with the when. That Spanish crown virus was only just starting to make the rounds and turning the world upside down. My job was forced to close, and at the same time, I picked up a medical condition that I knew was going to have me bedridden for months on end. Oh, I hope you got better. It ended up taking me almost two years to recover, but my family was able... What kind of condition bed riddles you for two years? What could that be? Bedridden for two years. Suggestions. Flu for two years? I don't know about that. Long COVID? Mm, maybe. Emma Mercer? I don't know. Chronic fatigue? It could be. Two years of bedridden. I don't know. Hmm. Long COVID two years. I thought long COVID was literally years and years because you it sort of never recovers, right? Well, we don't know that yet. Yeah. Uh, okay. Two years bedridden. Well, he said uh, a, a condition, that he, a medical condition. Hmm. Okay. I'm, I'm just curious about these things. Uh, it's not relevant to the story. Uh, it ended up taking close to two years for me to recover, but my family was able to get me through it all. I will always be grateful for them for it, and I love them all very much. I'm very lucky, and I'm blessed to have been born to this family. However... I was well into my 30s and had never once picked up an MMO before. For what kind of grown-ass man has enough time to play an MMO? I had been curious, though. Curious for months. I knew if I was ever going to have the opportunity to try out what my friends played and that I had heard was such a world to be a part of, then this would be the only time. Being bedridden, my entertainment options were anything I could do on my cell phone, which ended up being keeping track of the news, watching your videos, and using the PlayStation remote play function. With these limitations in mind, I had to decide which MMO I could even play. And that's when I saw it in all its majesty. The Shadowbringers trailer. I was sold. And I was riding home all the way to Uldar. Did you play it on your phone? Is that what you did? You didn't play it on your phone.
And in old art, I would eventually meet the man whose years of hard work I would destroy. A man by the name of Braggart. He's not listed here. Old. We got Mistress Yummy. I don't know if that's a correction, Bex, or not, but it's definitely Braggart in the story. Oh, women. He found me my first camp visit to Camp Drybone. Whoever designed that place must have been a troll or a complete prick. Because sprouts as dumb as me simply cannot find our way out. With those curved spiral road entrances and that exit hiding behind a wall. Braggart was amused as he saw a sprout running from one wall to the other. <laughs> Sweeping the floor and looking, looking at me as I searched desperately for an exit. I'd having just jumped into the pit to attune to the crystal, the telltale sign of a brand spanking new player. He sent me a message, called me over, and introduced me to the great to a great deal of things. Like how to join a party, how to ride passenger on somebody else's mount, because he literally had to pick me up from the place and show me the way out. I was so impressed with his glowing glams, his fancy car mount. He even showed off how fast we could drive as flying wasn't available to me yet. I wanted to be like him. So I unloaded a bunch of newbie questions on him. Like, how to just pop up at the local attunement crystals? It was infuriating that I had to walk for five or more minutes every time I had a different objective to get to. Oh my god, you walked around the city instead of using the etherites? <laughs> <laughs> Even after you tagged them? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and you were based in Uldar, eh? Oof. Uh, turbo oof. That's pretty grim. And I kept seeing other people just pop in right next to them. And no matter how hard I tried to search for the option to do it at the City Etherites, I just couldn't figure it out. He looked at me with confusion. And then he laughed. Are you asking how to use the teleport? Teleport, I asked. What's that, Braggart, sir? He then proceeded to show me how basically the whole game worked. It took time, of course, and by the end of it, he gave me 50,000 gil. So I would finally be able to teleport on my own for a while. And get whatever gear I needed. Braggart changed my whole world. As I had only made about 1,000 gil at the time. That gift left, quite, gift left quite an impression on me. He then took his leave. Like Santa Claus riding off into the sunset. But not before sending an FC invite and Discord link. Now Preacher. I accepted of course and upon seeing the opulence of that free company home I was once again overwhelmed. But everyone there was kind to me, treated me so, so well. There was even a girl I grew to somewhat like. Yes, I'm not lying. A real girl in game. <laughs> Why do you think I won't believe you? <laughs> we play with loads of girls and have done for years. It's not strange, right? It's not strange at all. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> It took me a while to realize just how invested FF14 was. But at the time, I simply didn't know that girls even played MMO. Oh, he did say he was in his 30s and never touched an MMO. We are talking about somebody who's a bit online gaming naive. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. A little online naivete. I came from the testosterone-filled awesomeness of Warzone. That explains it, yeah. He came from the Sigma males. Playing Warzone. And we, of course, cannot possibly fathom that. Right? There's far too much testosterone there. It's a sausage fest over there. <sighs> I was used to trash talking and shit talking all the time. Trying to break people's will to live with words before doing it in our KDs later. I was looking to banter the same way in 14. Oh no. Oh dear. <laughs> dies of cringe. Oh, you think that's dies of cringe. <clears throat> so as soon as I joined the FC, I decided to drop my first joke in chat to make my presence felt. I said, 
The world design of 14 is like a beautiful woman. And I can't wait to touch every inch of her. And just like that, I have arrived. <laughs> it actually confused me as there was zero response to my joke. Just dead silence. I then received a message in the pink telling me that half the room was women. Yes. Yes, I know. I now know at least that that wasn't even a joke, but a distilled form of pure cringe. I feel the pain of cringe as I retype these words out, both then and now. And I even, I swear to you, considered modifying the joke in this story submission to make it less cringe. But no, I am not the kind of man that runs away from his mistakes. Well, it's just not as good, right? How can we know that you learn if we don't know where you started from, right? How can we know? I'm honestly surprised that I did not get kicked. <laughs> I'm surprised too, actually. If that was your first line, blah, blah, blah has joined the guild and that was the first thing you said... I can imagine a lot of places you would have been immediately kicked. I can totally see that. But they decided to give me another chance after my profuse apologies. A decision that would actually change their destiny. Oh, God. The likable girl that I met was named Mistress Yumi. And she would often tag along with me to joke around or help me by crafting the best gear available to me. She would literally pop up at random and take me by surprise every time because I still wasn't used to reading player names. I had no clue that orange people were friends. <laughs> every conversation started with me asking, Well, where are you? While she would be jumping up and down repeatedly, even at times directly in front of me to catch my attention. I was new and stupid, remember? The frequency at which she would find me uh, had me really confused because I had no idea that player search existed. I thought fate had a sense of humor, and boy does it. Eventually, she helped me clear Bahamut with my first static. I still have a screenshot of the first time I saw Terra Flare with just me and her standing while the rest of my static was down and out. It looked incredible. For the first time, the gameplay had blown my mind. I was wondering how she could be so strong as a black mage. We were an eight-man st- Oh, God. It's a lady black mage. Oh, Jesus Christ. <sighs> we're going down a dark path, team. It's gonna get bad. We were an eight-man static of newbies and sprouts, and I was told to run it unsynced, but I had no idea what that meant as I did it. Yes, unsynced, a group of eight brand new players took weeks to clear coils. Well, I assume you're not capped yet, though. Maybe. Right, maybe they're still leveling. They're doing it current, maybe? Unsynced? I don't know. <sighs> and Mistress Yummy just filled, on the f filled in on the last day. Even though unsynced could enter unterpartied, we just didn't know. <laughs> the story of how that static came together is great. So, too, how it has progressed. Not a common meeting nor outcome and definitely drama content, but for a different time. Braga would check in on me from time to time as well, like a grandfather watching over me. And I would jokingly start calling him Senpai. Wow, you fell into this real quick. <laughs> you went from Warzone to Senpai in three easy steps. It didn't take long. From Warzone to Senpai in three easy steps. Nicely done, game. Nicely done. I don't think he liked it uh, much, so I did it a lot more. That's my kind of humor. But he kept treating me well, and we had a budding friendship. Him and Mistress Yummy made the FC feel like home. And aside from the mystery and death and the virus and the joblessness, all was well with the world. Later that summer, that infamous case known across the states that sets the hearts of many on fire and eventually many buildings as well took center stage of the consciousness of the US, the case of George Floyd. The other thing I was using my cell phone for was news, remember? 
and I was bombarded with it from all sides. So I'd evaluate the case from the mainstream and independent accounts. Where is this going? <laughs> I thought myself well-versed on the George Floyd situation, but again, my stupidity would shine through. I don't know where we're going. <laughs> Red alert, red alert. I don't know where we're going. Maybe we're going to tell another Warzone style classic zinger. Got him. Bit political. We'll see where it goes. The FC's Discord have been exploding with passion and anger for a few weeks now as the case was going on. Oh my God. Dude, we're getting dark, yeah. but the FC is full of political joking and discussion. <clears throat> I grew very concerned about the Discord discourse and felt compelled to join in and ask some questions. Like the initial Warzone thing about the women was cringe. This is just like, please don't. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> oh, oh, no. All I asked, all I asked was, what if, <clears throat> careful, the pressure from the public affects the outcome of the case, giving the officer a far harsher sentencing than what would have otherwise been? Question mark. Now, <laughs> I I can see why the FC died. Uh I imagine the response to this was just crispy. Crispy. <sighs> Silence. Silence. <laughs> Calm before the storm. And a few minutes after I posed the question Chaos. Absolute chaos. The Discord exploded. I had unknowingly written a verbal IED from genuine concern for the soul of my fellow countrymen at each other's throats in the Discord. And when it went off, it left nothing behind that figurative blood and warm memories to haunt the halls of the immaculate FC house. You got some more internet training to do. <laughs> if, if this chat didn't pre-warn you as to the outcome of this situation, you need to read the room <laughs> with some of these uh, Discord channels. <clears throat> I felt like Pandora, who after just having opened her box... Tried to seal it back tightly and in so doing, sealing all the hopes this FC ever had of recovering. Every point I would... Oh, you carried on. <sighs> I can save it. I can save it. No, 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 no. I can fix this. Just let me explain. <laughs> Just he committed to it, he did. He committed to the whole thing. Just let me explain. I can solve this. Everyone relax. <sighs> Every point I would make, I would be rebutted with passion that I had not seen before. And they were more emotional than logical. <sighs> my, my, my. My, my, my. Ah, oh, to be young. To be young. <laughs> and then, their emotion turned to hate. I had no intention of defending the officer. I was just... Are you trying to do it here? <laughs> are you trying to make your points here? I was just concerned that anger might win over justice. It didn't take more than five minutes before people started leaving the FC. The damage was done. And Braggart's work 
was undone. I felt such guilt, such great and horrible guilt at the end of what was dubbed Discord Day. But a lesson remained that has served me well in establishing of future groups, whether they were FCs or statics. What lesson did you learn here? Filter out the people that make you feel like you're walking on eggshells from the beginning. I don't think that's the right lesson. <laughs> the lesson should be when you see a fire, try not to throw gasoline on it. That's a good lesson. Attempt not to add dynamite to the inferno is also a lesson. That's a lesson too. Don't be anywhere with toxic false positivity. The FF14 community is very prone to it. Every member of every group I ever made after Discord Day gets hit with a DM telling them... <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. Every member of every group I ever made after Discord Day gets a DM from me telling them exactly the kind of guy I am. And the environment to expect to be a part of. Where discussion of any kind is permitted and encouraged. So long as no disrespect is intended. And Mike, let me tell you, it has worked wonders. I can crack jokes and roast people and have others roast me. And it's all such a great sense of camaraderie. Many people literally leave after that initial intense Discord DM. That What you created there is called a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you've done there you see you created what's called bubble <laughs> and in, within the bubble things kind of stay pretty good for a while but there's a little bit of an issue with bubbles is that at some point they go pop so you want to be careful there because you've uh you've created what what they call a little uh, a little bubble there <laughs> but those who remain became my static and grew okay Okay. As for Mistress Yummy and Braggart, I've never heard from Mistress Yummy again. It sucked losing friendship, but fortunately, I've encountered it in others that have been far deeper and more rewarding. Thank you, you know who. It turns out Braggart, on the other hand, had actually grown some form of respect towards me for challenging the status quo and being respectful about it. Not just going along with the building speed of the current and jumping off the waterfall with the rest. I had apologized to him several times over. And at first I felt like he was very much bummed out about it all. Though with his words he told me nothing happened. I felt like they were said in the same way Zoro says them at the end of One Piece's thriller bark arc. Zoro's in One Piece? The Spanish guy? Why would Zoro be in One Piece? I've sent you a gif to represent this. Uh... <laughs> uh hold on. Yeah, okay, uh, I don't get the context of this, but I don't know. A lot of what you type seems very, very epic. Very, very, it's a uh, anime man with three earrings. He does not look uh, Spanish. He has green hair and what looks like mud going down his face. It could be blood. It's hard to tell. It's not very red. Uh, and he says nothing happened. So, okay. I don't know. I don't know much. <laughs> I tried to describe it. It is blood. There you go. The chat can bring it up. He ended up leaving the game and doing his own stuff for a while. But after several times talking things over, we established a very real friendship. And I hope to meet him IRL soon enough. Very nice. My opinions... What are you doing? My opinion on the George Floyd case changed over time. <laughs> what are you doing to me? Oh my god. 
How did that come back? We were past it. We'd moved on. We'd gone forward. We'd moved on. We were past it. We'd, we'd, we'd gone forward. Fuck up. <laughs> we come back. We've moved forward. Oh, God. Okay. So, preach and fellow jury, I say to you, I am guilty. I'm guilty of being stupid, but hopefully I'm not a fool. There's some definitely miss... No, I don't think you're foolish. There's definitely some misguided rockets being fired. Much love to all of you, and I hope you end up with as good a friend as I have been blessed with this game. Yeah, not bad. <clears throat> P.S. I now know that being a grown-ass man playing MMOs is a pretty great thing. It certainly, it certainly is. I enjoy it quite a lot. <laughs> quite a lot. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, that brings to the end of drama for today and the end of our first real stream here back in the studio, office, whatever you want to call it. PG Towers is here, and it's been an amazing thing. But we are back live again tomorrow. We will be live tomorrow in the afternoon-ish. I have been talked into being one of the adults that will uh, try and encourage parents to get in, in a swimming pool. At a birthday party thing? I don't know, man. It's going to be a whole situation. I'll fill you in tomorrow. That's the general idea of the whole thing. Uh, but once that's done, I can get back here uh, and we'll be doing some Baller's Gate 3, which I did promise to start in December and we did start it during the subathon. We're about... How far in are we now? Uh, we are 22 hours in and have achieved nothing, but uh, well, we've achieved some things. Not, not many of them. I haven't done anything good yet. Which is a concern. We are 22 hours in and I haven't actually done anything good. The way I could look at it. Nothing good. Uh, well, I, I did save an artist, but another way of looking at it is that I bought a slave. So. Yeah. Uh, we killed a dog, but we did get rid of a drug addict. So that's working well for us. I think that's pretty good. Um, uh, we, we, I'm sure tomorrow we'll do something good. It'll be great. Uh, so my plan for tomorrow is we'll stream in the afternoon. We'll do some Baller's Gate for a bit. And then probably a little bit of Warhammer lore in the evening-ish time. Something like that. Uh, and then there will be no streams on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, or Boxing Day. Then we'll be back to streaming. And of course, in FF14, New Year's Eve, it is our Time Warp event. So we'll be there, okay? That is the game plan. That's what's going to be happening. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for a wonderful day drama next friday what day does it fall on uh yeah it's the 29th yeah we'll have drama next friday yeah that's totally fine <sighs> have a wonderful wonderful evening ladies and gentlemen and i'll see you tomorrow bye guys